Hello, Dr. Dan here. Today's health topic is selenium. Now, it's one of those things that you've heard about it, but what does it actually do for you? And we'll get into that in a moment. But first, as with all my presentations, please consult professional advice from your local GP, and they're aimed at giving you valid information which you can take to the GP to have stimulating discussions with them. So let's get started. Selenium is a trace element, and it plays a critical role in thyroid metabolism, in protecting and repairing DNA, and is incorporated in glutathione peroxidase, which is a powerful antioxidant in your body. Let's abbreviate that to GPX. Now GPX is generated in your cell, cell, meta, um, cell membrane, and essentially what happens is it acts as a bodyguard to wade off those pesky free radicals that can enter the cell and cause all kinds of damage. Now there's two different types of selenium that you should be aware of. The first is the organic version. So these are things like selenium methanine or selenium cysteine. And the second is your inorganic salts, so sodium selenite. Now according to the American press findings, you have the organic version are more bioavailable than the inorganic version. So the organic version is about 90% bioavailability compared to sodium selenite, which is around about 50% bioavailability. So let's just do a little bit of a rewind. For those of you that don't know, bioavailability is the amount of the selenium that can actually be received by the target receptor, the tissue, or the organ. The greater the bioavailability typically means the better it is for you. Now, in terms of the overall health benefits that selenium can bring, that's been known all the way back to 1996, where Dr. Clark, in a pivotal trial out of the University of Arizona, um, was testing selenium in his patients to see if it had any benefits on treating skin cancers like basal and squamous skin cancer. Now, although there was no significant reduction in treatment of the skin cancer, what he did find was actually quite remarkable. In fact, the patients that were on 200 micrograms of selenium per day for a long period of time, they actually showed a 50% reduction in all mortalities for all cancers and a 63% reduction in prostate cancer for those males that had prior cancer, which is relatively, relatively good when you think about it. Now, all of this clinical findings can be located on my YouTube channel here, so please click the link and type in the URL. Alternatively, you can also go to the Australian Nutritional Reference, which gives you a fact sheet of selenium and verifies all of these findings and the health benefits of selenium as well. Now, when it comes to the recommended daily intake, you should be looking at around about 60 micrograms of selenium if you're a female above the age of 19 years, or 70 micrograms of selenium if you're a male above 19 years of age. Now that's the recommended daily intake, or as I like to call it, the minimum daily intake for you to receive your adequate levels of selenium. Now, I encourage you to go to your doctor, get a blood test, because that will now enable you to determine your selenium levels. But again, that's only temporary for the current day. So if they really want to, they can analyze your hair follicles or essentially your fingernails to determine your selenium content a couple of months back. Now, when it comes to the overall selenium that you should be taking, we've said 60 to 70, all the way up to even 140 micrograms. Now, studies have shown out of China that if you're severely selenium deficient, so you're 20 micrograms of selenium, you're more predisposed to Keshen's disease. And Keshen's disease is essentially a chronic related disease of the heart, can cause cardiac enlargement, and can cause heart failure. And it's a real problem, especially over in China, because the soils aren't necessarily that rich in selenium. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you have 400 micrograms of selenium is your upper level, and that's where you're starting to get into the toxicity levels. So what I would recommend you stick to the 60 to the 140 micrograms of selenium to get the adequate levels that you need. Now, more often than not, you can get the selenium that you need by eating fish, so yellowfin tuna, flounders, or alternatively sardines, which is also rich in vitamin D and omega-3s, and Brazil nuts. As you can see here, you may have seen them before, are actually jam-packed with selenium. They have 60 to 90 micrograms of selenium, which is more than enough for that minimum daily allowance. However, 
The issue that you might face is that if you don't like fish, or alternatively, you don't necessarily know where the Brazil nuts were harvested or the vegetables that you're eating, if the soil that they're harvested in is rich in selenium, you might want to consider a multivitamin. And a multivitamin that I trust as a medicinal chemist is a pharmaceutical grade product. If you're interested to learn more about this multivitamin, which is rated one of the top in the world, it's one of the Royals, Rolls Royces, please go to my website and the YouTube channel there and you can find more about how you can get your hands on that particular supplement range. Now just a summary, selenium is extremely important for your health. It has been linked to reducing prostate cancers in some studies, and the levels that you should be aiming for, again, is around the 60 to 70 and upwards to about 140 micrograms. So this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to selenium. There are a range of different other clinical studies out there, so if you'd like any more information, please go to Dr. Daniel Lombarda's YouTube channel or Facebook page and type away. Until next week, have a happy and healthy week.